Welcome back to the Junk Room. I'm the Junk Man, and we got a special video today. Because this one's not going out to everybody. This was addressed to the folks over at Hasbro. That's right. Don't worry. The Junk Man's going to tell you how to make even more money selling Star Wars toys. It came out that in 2017, Star Wars toys were on the decline. Sure, it was still the number one boy selling toy during the Christmas holiday, but does this mean Star Wars fatigue has set in? Are kids not wanting to play with Star Wars toys anymore? Well, let's be honest, most kids today rather watch YouTube videos or play PlayStation and Xbox and go outside and play with action figures, but they still buy them. And Hasbro, don't worry, I'm here to tell you how to get kids and even collectors to buy them again. And don't worry Hasbro, some of this isn't all your fault, it's the store's fault also. Now I didn't go to any fancy college and I have no fancy degree telling me how to sell toys. But I do know Star Wars and I do know what people want. But maybe I'm full of shit. But here's a list of things I think that will help improve the Star Wars line from Hasbro. Because let's be honest, over the last couple years Hasbro has really let us down. Not just kids playing with them, but they let the collectors down also. I mean, it's the company that gave us this. Blue. So let's look at some things that Hasbro can do to fix the Star Wars line. And yes, before you say it, it does need to be fixed. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion, man. Here's the first one, Hasbro, and you're not going to like it. After the release of Han Solo and those toys hit the shelves, stop making Star Wars toys. I know, I know what you're saying, Mr. Hasbro. You're saying, but that's our bread and butter. We're going to lose millions of dollars. Well, there's an old saying that says you have to spend money to make money. Well, there's also a saying, well, I just made it up, that you have to lose money to make money. Maybe fatigue for Star Wars toys has set in. So what do you do? You don't, after Han Solo, you don't have another Star Wars movie until December 2019. That's a year and a half away. So go ahead, your, Star, your Han Solo toys are planned. Let them hit the stores and then put Star Wars on hold. Let stores sell out the old inventory that they've had for your a year or two, let them sell out the new Han Solo stuff, let kids and collectors miss Star Wars toys. If we walk into a toy story and we don't have any by December 2019, we're going to want everything we see. I know you'll lose money for about a year and a half, but Hasbro, you'll make it up in the long run. Trust me on this. Trust me. Next, what I would do is end Force Friday. Every time a movie comes out, what do you do, Hasbro? You force these toys on the stores. Hundreds of them. Four to eight foot section in the toy section. An end cap full. A lobby display. You force this stuff in. You oversaturate the market with new toys. And what happens? Sure, they sell good maybe the first week or two. And then the store is left with huge and huge inventory of the first series figures. And then by the time you're ready to release series two or three, these stores are not going to order more figures because they're still sitting on series one. The stores are so over full, they're clearing them out and they're not going to order more. All the store sees is here's something sitting on the shelf that we can't sell. That's why a lot of these stores don't get series two or series three because they have such a nightmare trying to get rid of the Force Friday stuff. Please just stop with Force Friday. You can do it small, release a small wave, do a little celebration that new toys are coming out. But you don't need an eight foot section, an end cap, and a display. You don't need to flood the market with new toys. And while we're talking on the subject of new toys, you do this Force Friday, what, three, four months before the new movie comes out? And I'm sorry, but kids and maybe collectors, when they walk into a toy store in September, months before a new movie comes out, when they haven't even hardly even seen a trailer or TV spots for it, they're not looking for a Rose or a Paige or a DJ. No, sure, they'll buy Luke Skywalker and they'll buy Han Solo and Kylo Ren and maybe some aliens they didn't know they wanted. But when you got a kid walking down the toy aisle, he's not going to want Paige or Rose or, like I said, DJ or maybe some other minor characters. They don't know who these people are. Even a collector, if he's got a limit on how much money he's going to spend, he's going to pick up those main heroes first, people he knows, or aliens or robots that just look really cool. Nothing against Paige, nothing against Rose, and nothing against the, 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 the DJ. But, face it, they're not going to blow off the shelf. Save those figures for after the movie comes out. If you're going to release figures before the movie, make it the main heroes, people we at least see in the trailers. Work with this bro to come out with who you're going to make. And please, please, we don't need stuff like this. I think we can all agree on that. Can't we, Hasbro? Can't we agree on this? I mean... 
Even J.G. Abrams says he doesn't know who this guy is. So, we take Star Wars off the shelf for about a half a year, and then we come back with a very limited Force Friday. What is something else we can do to make the Star Wars Hasbro brand even better? Cheaper play sets. I know, I know Hasbro, I've heard you say it. I was at Star Wars Celebration, I think I heard it on the panel myself, that play sets don't sell. You know why they don't sell? Because you want $300 for the damn shit. That's why they don't sell. What you do is make cheaper play sets. How do you do that? You don't put all the gadgets in it. Sure, all the kids like gadgets. But really, all a kid needs is his imagination and a hunk of plastic. That's all you need to do. You don't need it to talk to each other. It doesn't need to do all these special gadgets. All you need is a playset with some levels. Look over here, Hasbro. Take a note from Kenner. That Death Star playset is an amazing playset. And guess what? It doesn't make any electronic sounds. It doesn't do any voice reenactment. It doesn't make any sounds. It doesn't do anything but have a crank you turn by hand. And an elevator that works by hand. Nothing electronics. I'm sure kids like electronics, but let's start small. Most parents are not going to lay down $100 to $200, $300 for a place for the kid. And this goes for ships also. Sure, you want some sounds on the ship, but you don't, need the sh you don't need the ships to talk. You don't need the ships to interact with other ships or whatever gimmick you come up with. You really don't need a ship that fires Nerf darts. What you need is a ship. $20, $15, $20 ship, a play set. Let's try to keep it around $50, maybe a bigger one around $75. I know what you're saying. Like I said, I've heard you say before that play sets don't sell. It's because you overprice them. And believe me, I have a 12-year-old son. I would love to buy him play sets, but I'm not paying $75, $100, $200 for a damn play set. Instead of $100 on a play set that he's going to play every once in a while, I could spend $60 on a Xbox game that I know he's going to play over and over and over with his friends. Because sadly, that's where it's going. Kids don't play as much, but they still play. And trust me, like I said, I have a son. He plays with stuff. Maybe not like I did as a kid. That's just because he has more things to play with. The only thing I had to play with was my toys and my toy. Girl, you nasty. So we got cheaper play sets and we got Force Friday being scaled down. And then we got the uh, year and a half break. What else can we do? And it's one I kind of fought on. I dragged my feet on this too, Hasbro. More joints on the figure. My son gets so upset when he buys the cheaper Star Wars line of figures. And they only bend, they only twist their arms. I mean, that's old school to me, Kenner. I don't mind it. I like it. because they. But kids today, they want to bend at the wrist, bend at the elbow, bend at the shoulders, bend at the neck, bend at the hips, bend at the knees. They want to, at their ankles, everywhere there's a joint, put a joint. Now, when you put joints, don't do it like this. Do you know what I'm saying? Give kids joints. And believe me, like you have, bro, I fought this for years. I don't like it. To me, it makes them look weird. But... We're talking kids here, not collectors. This is what you have to do, Hasbro. And while we're on it, why have two lines? You go into Walmart, you got the basic figure lines, and then you got the Black Series small ones. Now, I'm not talking about the big ones. So you got a Black Series little fin figure and then a cheaper fin figure. They look like the same figure. Don't waste your time doing two different lines like this. One aimed to the collectors and one for the kids. Find a way to mix them together. Make the kids want to play with the collector's items and make the collectors want to buy the kid items. And here's how you fix the figures. Besides getting them to look better. Hasbro, you got to really work on making them, some of them look better. Come on now. That should never get past inspection, right? That should never get shipped out of the warehouse. Anyway, here's what you do for the figures. Don't focus just on the new stuff. You need two different lines. You need a classic line, which will have figures from the original trilogy and the prequel trilogy. And on this other line over here, you're gonna have new Saga toys. You're gonna have both lines, but don't flood the market with all this. What you do, Hasbro, is for, you release 10 classic figures for six months. That's what you're focused on, six months, classic figures. Classic figures, again, from the original trilogy and the prequel, I'll count that in. Let those hit the stores for six months, and then six months after that, Release 10 more figures from the new Saga line. Your Finn, your Ray, your Poe, your Page, everything from the newer movies. Six months. Let that hit the market. Let that sell down. Don't overstock anybody. Don't force doors to order in caps and displays. And then six months pass. Series 2 of Classic Line returns. Let it die down. And in six months, Series 2 of the Saga toys hit the shelves. And that will hit it right around December, maybe in time when the new movie comes out. So what you're looking at is 
a classic line, a saga line, series one and series two throughout the year. Every six months, you know there's going to be new toys out there. Unlike now where you walk into a Walmart or a Toys Us, you're going to see the same figure sitting on the shelf for a year or at least from hell around here. It seems like from Force Friday to Force Friday, you're not going to find anything new. And why classic series? Kids still love the classic movies, the prequels, and the classics. Kids still want Hammerhead, Snaggletooth. Sure, they don't just focus on the main heroes. What I would do with the classic line, that series one, I would do the main heroes. Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Han Solo, Qui-Gon Jinn, Obi-Wan Kenobi, Anakin Skywalker. And then, six months later, when you do series two, focus on those that you're not really sure about. Focus on the more the aliens, the robots, stuff like that. And do the same with the saga line. Series 1, release the ones Kylo Ren, Paige, Finn, Ray, the ones we all know. By the time Series 2 comes out six months later, hopefully the movie will be in theaters, you'll be able to release more of the obscure figures like Paige or DJ. So once you get all that figured out, here's the next step you have to do, Casbro. You have to do this. You have to get better at designing cards. Now, some of these look good for a collector standpoint, and they look good maybe hanging on a wall, but look what Kenner did. Kids saw that and wanted it. You take a kid that has his week allowance, $10 bill wadded up in his hand, walking down a toy aisle. He's going to walk past this Wolfman. He doesn't even remember this in the movie. Don't put art on the cards. Put a scene from the film. That way it registers in kids' minds when they're walking by, that's from Star Wars, that was in Star Wars. I want to play with that. Just drawing a picture of a wolf man and having this wolf looking guy on a card does not draw attention to kids to buy it. So and the only other thing I would add to this is more for collector side. Stop with the exclusives. I'm going to say it again. Stop with the exclusives. Now this doesn't go for Hasbro. This goes for Funko. Any toy company out there, you're getting carried away with these exclusives. It makes it impossible to collect the line. One thing I loved about this line, on the back of the card, I... I would get the figures, I checked off which ones I wanted when I went to the store. When I knew I was about to go to Zares or TJNY or AIM, I knew I had the back of the card. I knew what figure I wanted and what figures I needed. But you can't really do that today. One thing, on the back of the card, you don't have any kind of checklist. For the most part, you might have three or four figures. But give us a good checklist for that year, not just for that. Give us a checklist of the Series 1 and 2. Give us a checklist for the Classic Series 1 and 2, like I told you to do. And then a checklist for the new Saga films. That way kids can buy the new Saga stuff if they don't want the old stuff. And people that want the old stuff don't have to worry about the new stuff. But kids and collectors shouldn't have to run all over the state to try to track down a complete line. I shouldn't have to run to Target and check off, oh, they got the Kylo Ren wearing the helmet. And then I have to go to Best Buy and buy and find Luke Skywalker dressed up as a Stormtrooper. I gotta go to Kmart because only they have the raid that has snow on her boots. Stop with the exclusive. I don't mind an exclusive here and there. Maybe one a year, two a year, something like that. But you're getting carried away, Hasbro. And I don't know if the stores are demanding this or you're demanding this from the stores. I don't know. I don't care. Just stop doing it. Just stop doing exclusives. Again, if you want to do one or two, that's fine. But please, just stop. Again, that's just some ideas I have to help you out, Hasbro. You don't owe me any money for this. You don't even have to give me a thank you. You don't even have to acknowledge you saw this video. Because let's be honest, it's probably going to get about 300 views and you're not going to see it. Hopefully someone at Hasbro will see this. They're probably all laughing at what a bunch of bullshit this is and how it would never work in the marketplace. Hey, and maybe you're right. Are you a Star Wars fan? Do you collect the toys? Or maybe you have kids that buy the toys? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Is everything I said here really out of whack and would never work in the real world? Hey, maybe so. Like I said, I didn't go to one of them fancy schools that taught you how to sell stuff. But only thing I can base this on is what I want as a kid, what my son wants as a kid, and what I want as a collector. So thank you for watching. And Hasbro, if you did watch this, take it to heart. I'm just trying to help you out. And as always, keep your eyes at StarWarsJunk.net. Thank you so much, Mr. Funk, for saying what needed to be said.